Hello. I want to introduce you to the human brain. Here we go. This brain, as you can see, is of an adult human. The brain is composed of two major components. One, the cerebrum, or the big brain. And on the other side, this area, which is the brain stem, which it can be divided into a hindbrain and a midbrain. Here, you can't see the midbrain, because it's deep in here. This area is the hindbrain. These two lobes belong to the cerebellum, or the small brain. The cerebellum and the cerebrum share many similar features. For example, they have two lobes. Sorry, two hemispheres. Okay, hemisphere one and two. Hemisphere one and two. And they are folded, as you can see. Here, you see the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is responsible for function for basic functionings such as breathing and other essential behaviors. Above the medulla, or superior to the medulla, you see the pons. The pons are responsible for your level of consciousness. For example, sleep. The pons are part of a larger system called the reticular formation. If you look at the cortex, this is the, that is the outer area of the cerebrum, you can see what's left from the Mannings. More particularly, this is the dura mater, the most exterior and the toughest layer among the Mannings. If you look here, you can see how thick the Mannings really are. Okay? Now I'm going to put the brain aside for a second in order to show you the spinal cord. As you can see, the spinal cord is also covered by dura, okay? Because it's also part of the CNS. Inside the spinal cord, and we cannot really see it right now, we have fibers going all the way from the brain to all the way down. These are called tracts. These, on the other hand, are, are fibers going to and from the different organs of the body. We call these spinal nerves, and you have 12 of them. In your brain, you also have nerves that belong to the peripheral nervous system that just like the spinal nerves, and they are called cranial nerves. Both cranial nerves and spinal nerves have somatic and autonomic, autonomic functions. In the brain, most probably the most famous cranial nerve, and I'm trying to expose it right now, is the optic nerve here. You can also see that the optic nerve decussates at this point. That is, crosses over to the other side of the, hem of the brain, to the other hemisphere. We call this point of decussation the optic chiasm. And, af and after the optic chiasm, the optic nerve is called optic tract. There are other cranial nerves which I will not focus at, at right now. At this point, I wish to 
compare between the human brain, which I just shown you, and a sheep brain. As you can see, even though the sheep is a larger animal, even much larger than a human, the brain is much, much smaller. Not only is the brain smaller, but it's much less folded. The cortex is, that is. The more folded the cortex is, the more surface it has. This is one of the many reasons that the sheep is a much less intelligent animal than humans, than most humans at least. If you look at the brainstem of the sheep, and here is the optic chiasm, you can see that the brainstem is much more similar between the two. And that is because the brainstem is responsible for very basic functions that are pretty much the same for sheep and humans. At this point, we already talked about the hindbrain, so we'll go on and talk about the midbrain. The midbrain will be somewhere here, but we can't really see it in the whole brain. Therefore, we're going to use this piece which will represent the midbrain. First of all, when you look here, you can see the two inferior colliculi. Remember that the tectum is composed of the four colliculi. The superior ones were supposed to be around here and of course gone in this structure. If you look from this angle at the midbrain, then if you look at this imaginary line from here to this direction, that will be called the tectum. Tectum being the four colliculi together. From this point to here, we are calling it the tegmentum. In the middle, you see this hole. This is the cerebral equiduct. It carries CSF from the brain down the uh, brain stem and into the spinal cord. Also you can see here these dark lines which are really the substantia nigra. It's black because the dopaminergic cells here cell that produce dopamine also contained melanin which gives it the black color. Melanin is also the hormone that gives your skin a darker color when you go to the sun. <clears throat> Sorry. The uh, dopaminergic neurons in a substantia nigra sends accents to the basal ganglia. The secretion of dopamine in the, in the basal ganglia is what allow you to do to initiate movements voluntary movements if this area is destroyed you'll have the same symptoms of Parkinson's disease that is problems in initiating movements if you dissect the brain of a person with Parkinson's disease after, after he dies this area will not be black anymore because of because the dopaminergic neurons are gone. And this is about what the basic things that one sees when they look at the midbrain in a cross section. I just want to remind you that the tectum, which I mentioned before, is involved in orientation reflex, okay? Sending your attention to where the source of the stimuli is, the source of noise or sight. 
going up, we will, we will now look at the forebrain. <coughs> this is the forebrain when you look from a mid-sagittal section, that is, you cut the brain and look from the side. Okay? You, you take this brain and you cut it, let's say, along the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is what connects the two hemispheres. In this image, the corpus callosum is here. It appears white because it contains accents with myelin that cross over from this hemisphere to the next, to the other. Below the corpus callosum, you can see the thalamus. Salamus, the sensory relay station. Above the corpus callosum, you have the cingulate cortex, which is part of the limbic system and responsible for, for example, the emotion of pain. Above the cingulate cortex, you already have what, we, what is called the neocortex, that is, can be divided into lobes from, from um, frontal lobe to the occipital lobe. Below the thalamus, going back down, we have in the area of the hypothalamus. Thal thalamus and hypothalamus together making up the diencephalon. Also you can see, can see here this structure here which is the pineal gland, which hopefully you remember is the area where, where Descartes believed that the body and the mind interact. Today we know that what really happens here is the production and secretion of melatonin, which is responsible to regulate your sleep cycle, to make it adjust for night and day. I think that this is probably what you need to know, the basic features of the brain.